This makes this state low. These are part of his ways. But how little a portion is heard of him? You know, we like talking a lot about a lot of things about God, what he's done. But how little a portion is heard of him? Who he is. The wonder, not just the word. Think about that. Oh, mm, hallelujah. I like it. That's what it says. Amen. I didn't ask the question. God <laughs> did. Amen. But I, thy name, 
O Lord God of hosts. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? Get focused by them. Yeah. Yeah. If the Word of God gets you focused on the God of the Word, hey, you might feel sorry for yourself for a little while. But when you start meditating on the Word yeah. of God, Day, day and night, and observe to do according to all that's written there. Yep. Oh, God's going to make your way prosperous. You'll have good yep. success. Yep. You'll be happy. Yep. Amen. Yep. Yes. Hey, you'll be happy in Him. Yep. Amen. Yep. You'll have your affection set on things above and not on things of the earth. Amen. You're yep. dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. Yep. I ain't even going to pray. Amen, Pastor. Well, then, Lane, you're supposed to be testifying. All that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if my prepared message is even going to be as good as his unprepared message. <laughs> uh, this is one of those times when, you know, uh, I'm a little afraid because I know he knows what he's talking about. I hope that what I'm talking about is good. But but uh, we are missionaries to South Korea. My name is, is Brian Lane. My wife, Caitlin, is back here. We have a son, Nathan, and one more all, along the way due in May. Yep. And uh, again, thank you to your pastor for allowing us to be here. We, we greatly appreciate it. It's always nice to be in my wife's home state. She was born in, in Warsaw, Indiana, which is a little farther north, uh, but it's closer to Michigan, so maybe not so great there. But, uh, uh, but it is good to be here. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, what, what our plans are, what we're doing. So I was saved when I was a, a young boy. I remember in 2005 on Easter Sunday, I remember that uh, my pastor was, was preaching. I really don't remember what it was he was preaching about. But I remember at the close of the service, uh, he finished up by saying, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that is the single most important thing, single most important decision you can ever make. And I didn't hear anything else, but I heard that. And I began to think and to wonder, and, and I started to, uh, to think it through, and I asked my dad, who was sitting right behind me, Dad, what does he mean by that? What, what does he mean by salvation? What's that word mean? And my dad knew what I meant by that. He, he knew what I was asking. He took me through the Bible and showed me about God's promise of salvation, and I trusted Christ as my Savior. Mm -hmm. Though I trusted him as my Savior then, I had doubts of my salvation for many years after that. And I think that's especially common for, for people who have been raised in church, who have, have heard the gospel, who maybe have lived like Christians for a while before they were even saved. And I doubted my salvation so much. What it came down to was I was trusting how I felt over what he promised. Yeah. Salvation is by faith either way. That's right. You either yeah. trust it by faith or you don't trust him at all. That's it. Right. And when I realized his promises by faith, I've already trusted him. I trust him the same today like I did before. Yes, I, my eternity is in his hand in John 10, uh, 28 and 29. What an amazing verse. It gave me uh, the assurance of salvation that I knew that because I trusted in him, my eternity was in his hand. I couldn't do yeah. anything that I, I, I couldn't even get out of his hand if I wanted to. Yeah. I'm right. so thankful yeah. to have understood that truth. Uh, my wife, uh, my wife's family was reached through her pastor going on soul uh, up in in Warsaw, and uh, she was she lived in a little place called Pearson, and he was on soul uh, led her dad to Christ shortly after uh, her mom was led to Christ. Uh, they were in church faithful for a time, separated, and and uh, but before then they uh, they were faithful to church. And started getting involved in the ministries. And there was a time when uh, out, well, well, her parents were helping with ministries. She was in a Moana club. And right. the teacher went around the room and asked, do you know that you're going to heaven? Do you know that you're saved? Do you know, do you know you're a Christian? And as it came to her, she knew, I've never trusted Christ. I'm not a Christian. She made sure that she asked her mom on the way back home, though she didn't ask it then. She asked on the way home and said, Mom, how do I know that I'm going to heaven? And her mom led her to Christ. And Caitlin got saved that day. I believe that's a 12-year-old girl. And uh, when God started dealing with my heart, I, I knew that uh, in 2013, God called me to preach. And I knew uh, 
uh, going into Bible college in 2016, I knew that uh, as a preacher, I would uh, I was open to do whatever God wanted me to do, whether it was in the state somewhere, whether it was out as a missionary. I had a burden as a missionary, but I really didn't know what God wanted me to do. I was just open to his will. And in junior year of college, somebody told me, Brian, you ought to pray about God's will for your life. If he's got a will. Uh, he wanted want you to know it. You ought to pray about it. And it was like God hit my heart and he said, you know that's right. You know you ought to be praying about it. Yeah. And so I, I started praying to the Lord, where would he have me to be? What, what would he have me to do? And as I prayed, it seemed like South Korea popped up in everything. I can't explain it more than just God allowed that to happen. I mean, in, uh, in, in school and reading and news and sports and uh, everything, everywhere I looked, it had something to do with, with South Korea. And as the wise junior in Bible college, I ignored it. I thought, this isn't how God's going to call me to, to a mission field. There's, He's going to do it in some greater way. This isn't how it works. Man, and man. as I ignored that more, Come it on. bothered me more. Come on. And it was like the Holy Spirit was saying, you're ignoring me. You're not even giving me the time of the day to, to, to let me work on your heart. And eventually I said, okay, I'll, I'll pray about it. I'll see if, if, if that's right or not. And when I prayed, God gave peace. And that peace has lasted until today. And I'm so thankful for it. And we know that we are uh, sent of and called of God to be missionaries to South Korea. We are excited about that. We started deputation seven months ago. And I'll tell you a little bit in the, the sermon uh, about uh, how deputation was started. But I'll say it was not the way that we planned. Uh, we, we planned it one way, but man, it worked out so much better just trusting God in it than if we had ever done it uh, the way that we had planned. But South Korea is a place, it, it, it's, it's a place of 52 million people in, in the same size of the country as the state of Indiana. Now, if you know the population of Indiana, there are 7 million people here. In, so that means in South Korea, there are over seven times the number of people in a place the same size. That's a lot of people, isn't it? Absolutely. And so uh, there, there are many people in a tight area, many of them. In fact, uh, if you've seen our banner or if you've picked up one of our credit cards, you'll notice that uh, there's a picture on here. This is looking towards North Seoul Tower. Uh, there's the mountain with the tower right there. And then there are many, many tall buildings around there. And uh, if you look especially towards this right side, you'll see many buildings that look about the same. Uh, those are not businesses. Those are not corporations. Those are apartment buildings. Many, many people in South Korea, in fact, the, the vast majority of people live in apartments rather than homes. And uh, they, they're, they're usually between 8 and 30 stories tall. Uh, there are many, many people living in those areas. Uh, this does mean that there are more opportunities for them to be able to, to walk around and to get places, which is a help to me because then I can lose some weight. But along with that, uh, the, uh, the roads are, are crazy in South Korea. Uh, there is a reason why there is uh, an Asian stereotype towards drivers. It's because it's true. They are crazy drivers. Sure. But uh, we are, uh, there, there are many people in Seoul, many uh, people that need to be reached there. There are many cities in South Korea, uh, in the southern half especially, that don't even have a good, solid, uh, independent Baptist church. They're fundamental. Uh, there, are, there aren't many around there. Uh, there are some that are based towards the military bases, and, uh, those who are in our, our uh, armed forces, but there are not many reaching the Korean people. Uh, there are people there that are uh, well, let me give you an idea of what the, the Korean mindset is like. The Korean mindset is really not too far off from our own. They have the idea, they want to do well in their education, which is very, very highly prioritized in South Korea. Uh, they want to do well in their education, so then they can get to a good university, and then from there they hope to get to a, a good job like LG or Samsung or one of these big tech companies that we know of today. Um, and they think, if, if I can just do well in my school, be really smart, uh, have, have people really res respect me and make a lot of money, that I can truly be happy in life. 
Now, from a human perspective, from a carnal perspective, that sounds really good. That's not how it is. That, that, that's yeah. not how it works at all. You cannot be happy by following your own lust. And cool. South Korea has come to know that that is true. South Korea is fourth among all countries in suicide rate. Oh, and wow. the three countries who are above it are all third world countries. Meaning, it is the most unhappy, prosperous country in the world. Uh, they have a very high alcohol addiction rate in Korea. Wow. Uh, they, uh, their birth rate is so low because they're having these ideologies come in that say it's bad to have kids, it's bad to overpopulate. You don't need that trouble. And because of that, people are not having kids. They're thinking it's too difficult. We saw many baby carriages, many, many strollers in, in South Korea, but we saw more dogs in the baby strollers than actual kids. Uh, it, it's sad when you see it, what it is. It's not hard to tell it's that they need Jesus. They learn, they, yeah. They're lacking. Uh, I love how practical the word of God is. It's like when you follow God's word, things just work out better. I don't quite understand why that is, but I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that, that we know that. It, and our goal is to go to South Korea to learn the language, plan to church, to see people saved, and, and grow the church through soul winning and discipleship programs, and, and, and through there, uh, be able to see the people turn towards God. We are excited about that. And uh, we would ask, first of all, that you pray. There are many things that we could, that we need prayer for. First of all, we ask that uh, we would ask that you pray for our uh, our support to be completed. I mean, We're at 33% support right now, and it's been such a blessing already. Just uh, yesterday, we found out. We were just looking at our uh, at, at the supporting churches for this month. We saw that three churches took us on without us even knowing. Amen. That's a good thing. We're excited about that. But uh, we've been increasing our support, but we're at 33%. That is exactly one third of our support. Uh, it's taken us seven months. That means that if we keep this same rate, we could be in Korea uh, in, in just a little over a year. Would you pray for that? Would you also pray that, that God would help us to, uh, to get our key money raised up? Uh, I won't, won't take too much time to explain what it is, but it's basically like a, a security deposit, uh, a, a, a damages deposit that you would put in for the apartment. And uh, as long as everything is good when you uh, when you leave the apartment, you get all that back. But here, that would be maybe $200, $500, something like that. In Korea, that can be uh, $50,000 upward of, of much, much more. Wow. And so please pray that, that we would uh, be able to raise that up. Right now, God has allowed us to be able to put money away towards that. Uh, we have a, a good amount saved, but we would ask, please, Pray for us that we would be able to, to, to save that up. And then please pray that, that God would soften the hearts of the South Koreans. Yeah. Right now, they're, they're a hardened people. They're, their hearts are hardened. And so if you please pray for that, that would be a, a big request for us. Um, if we, we have a, a, a video that we usually show, I wish you could see it. Even if you, if you would like, you could end up uh, looking at our, uh, our table we have it on our website. But I'll just describe to you. The, the first part of the video, I'll never forget this. When we were in Busan, South Korea, which is in the southeastern part, it's a, uh, uh, a coast city, most of, uh, of the country. It's a peninsula, so there are many things like that. But Busan is a, a coast city. We, we went with the missionaries to see a Buddhist temple. I'd never seen one before. I'm, I was unfamiliar with it. Uh, I'm from Illinois, which is very similar to, to Indiana in a lot of ways. We don't have a lot of Buddhists, Buddhist, a lot of uh, immigrants. So I was very unfamiliar with it. We went over there, and you could hear from, from the outside. It was a, a beautiful building, but you could hear from the outside. They had uh, on a speaker a person chanting uh, uh, over, so you could hear it from the courtyard over there. Uh, there were, uh, I remember, three stairs. As soon as you got there, you could see three stairs leading up to where the Buddha statue was, the main Buddha statue. And uh, I was told you're supposed to go up on the left side and come down on the right. And you never go up the middle because that's supposed to be if Buddha comes. Uh, so far, I've never seen him use that, so I have to 
man. No, but uh, uh, <laughs> he's not going to use them. No, sir. But since the service was going on, we slipped inside. We went up to uh, where the auditorium of that uh, Buddhist temple was, where they were having the service. And we went inside. The first thing that you notice is these little gold dots is what they seem like along the walls. When you look a little closer, you see those gold dots are little Buddha statues in cubby holes everywhere along the walls. I mean, every last wow. inch of the wall had a Buddha statue along it. It, 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 was, it, it, it was freaky. It, it was made to look, uh, really, it was idolatrous in every single way. Uh, we could uh, see a person near the front. One person was banging a drum. One person was ringing a bell. The other person was chanting, uh, and people were bowing, just up and down bowing. It was one of the freakiest things that I've ever seen. These are, uh, th this is a religion that people actually genuinely believe. It it's not that they're pretending, they, they believe it, right? Yeah. And they're, they're being tricked by it. Mm -hmm. There are many things in Korea where we'd say, that's horrible. Would you please pray that, one, God would soften their hearts, help them see the, the, the wickedness of those religions. There are many cults and other things that uh, make it difficult as well, but please pray that God would, would break their hearts, soften their hearts, right. and then that he would make us effective for him. If you're ready, would you please turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3. Now, I think I remember the pastor said we have done it at midnight, so I'll, I'll try to get you out a few minutes early, but no. no but, uh, all right, Proverbs chapter 3, and pastor, if I'm going too long, then I'll flag you down, and, and uh, we'll turn everyone. So, all right, Proverbs chapter 3, we'll read two verses. This will be a little bit different of a message. This is a new message, so we're going to find out together how good this is, yeah, but, but uh, like this that. is really a testimony of how good God has been on deputation to us. In fact, let me make sure that uh, uh, I've got the microphone on and see if it does any better. All right. But this is really just a testimony of how good God has been to us while we've been on deputation. And since we have uh, been serving him and following him in our life. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Right. In all thy ways acknowledge him, Amen. and he shall direct thy paths. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Um, I, I love these verses. These are verses that every person ought to know. Every child, every adult, everyone ought to know. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, it, it is such a, a simple passage of verses. Let's... Let's go ahead and pray before we get into this sermon. All right. Father, thank you for the, the day that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and be, uh, to, to hear your word being preached. We're asking that you please bless this service. Please bless it. Help us to see that trusting is better than anything. Yeah. Help us to see that, uh, that our own understanding will fail us and that there's nothing that we can do on our own that will ever be as successful as you. Uh, please use this sermon. Help it to be an encouragement. Help it to be a challenge. We're asking you to please fill me with your power and use it today for your honor and glory. In your name, amen. 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 I, I love these verses. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. How simple is that? Uh, I, I, I can't understand people that, that say that the Bible is, it, isn't easy to understand. It's very easy to understand. Come on. Come on. It, it, it's simple. I, I'm so thankful. Uh, there's no way that you can misunderstand that. Uh, this, this gives us three commands that we are to, to obey, to follow as believers. Number one, it says, trust the Lord with all our heart. Uh, God has been teaching us step by step to follow these commands. Uh, number two, it's uh, lean not unto thine own understanding. Number three, it says, in all our ways acknowledge you. And God has been teaching us these steps. He's been teaching us uh, 
what we are to do with them. Through deputation, I've heard it said many times, deputation is a learning experience. It really is. Because you're not allowed to trust yourself when you're on deputation. You can't. Because if you trust yourself, you're basically resigning all power that God affords to you. you you've got to trust in God in deputation, and it forces you to do it. And I, I've heard people say before, deputation is difficult. It's difficult raising support. I mean, I, uh, I admire missionaries who are out there for many years and trying to, to raise support. It's not an easy thing to do. But I will say it's so rewarding. It is so incredibly rewarding to see God work in our lives and be able to, to say he's answered prayers. He's, he's taken care of me. I'm so glad of what God has done uh, for my life. God's been teaching us. Uh, it, it's just so practical. When you follow the Bible, it's, it's better than, than uh, what you could ever do on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to go through these three things. The, the, the three commands that the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And really this is just going to be a testimony of how good God has been to us.